Hi, I am attorney Marie Chris Batan Lasco. This is my virtual classroom. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this channel, I shall aim to simplify the law. I shall discuss concepts and principles of law in under 10 minutes. Hi again, everyone. For this video, I want to talk about Article 1818 of the Civil Code. This is still on partnership. Now, Article 1818 is a, a very long provision. And sometimes when we study long provisions, we get intimidated by it. And it's now harder to understand. So for this video, I will simplify Article 1818 for you. Article 1818 just actually talks about the extent of the power of a partner when he or she acts for the partnership and the effect of those acts to the partnership business. So let's talk about this. Let's classify the acts of a partner into two. One would be your acts of administration and second would be your acts of strict dominion or of ownership. An act of administration are acts of a partner that would deal with the day-to-day -day operations of a business, like looking for suppliers for your inventory, or choosing a security agency, or choosing a janitorial service for your company or for the partnership business, or perhaps looking into rental spaces. So these are all for the day-to-day -day operations of the business, as opposed to acts of ownership or acts of strict dominion, which now goes into the properties of the partnership or of the partnership itself, like assigning partnership property in favor of partnership creditors, or disposing of a goodwill of the business, or doing any other act making it impossible for the partnership business to carry on. Like perhaps you are into manufacturing and then you sell all the equipment of the partnership business and you can no longer continue with a partnership business, or confessing a judgment, or entering into a compromise concerning a partnership claim or liability, or submitting a partnership claim or liability to arbitration, or renouncing a claim of the partnership. Those that I've mentioned are actually those that are enumerated in Article 1818. And these acts are considered as acts of ownership. After determining if it is an act of ownership or an act of administration, and you have now identified that it is an act of administration, you now further classify it into two. For act of administration, it could be acts for apparently carrying on of the business or acts not apparently for carrying on of the business. When you see acts that are apparently for the carrying on of business, then this would mean that these are acts of a partner that is clear to the third person that this is something to do with the operations of the business. So if you are in retail, if the partnership is in retail, then something to do with getting or contacting suppliers or getting Customers. So these are acts apparently for the carrying on of a business. How about for acts not apparently for the carrying on of the business, but still are considered as acts of administration? It could be ancillary to the operations of the business. Example would be looking for rental spaces for the partnership property. Now, once you have determined whether it is for acts apparently carrying on of the business or acts not apparently for carrying on of the business, then you look into whether that act of a partner is authorized or unauthorized. After determining that, you then also look into 
if such partner's act was not authorized, you then look into whether the third person whom the partner is dealing with had knowledge that he was authorized or that he had no knowledge that the partner was not authorized. So all of these things or factors you will have to look into to arrive at a conclusion as to whether that act of a partner will bind the partnership. So let's talk about different scenarios one by one. First, the act of a partner is an act of administration and such is apparently for the carrying on of the business. If the partner is authorized by doing such act, then the partnership is bound. Second scenario, it is an act of administration, still apparently for the carrying on of the business, but this time the partner is not authorized. To know whether the partnership will be bound or not, you look further into whether the third person whom the partner is dealing with had knowledge or no knowledge that he had no authority. If that third person had no knowledge that the partner so acting is not authorized, then the partnership is bound. Third scenario, it is for acts of administration, for acts also that are apparently for the carrying on of the business, the partner is not authorized, and the third person had knowledge that the partner is not authorized. Will this bind the partnership? The answer is no. Because this time, the third person had knowledge. And so he cannot make the partnership liable. Fourth scenario, it is an act of administration, but these acts are not apparently for the carrying on of the business. The partner is authorized. Does this bind the partnership? The answer is yes, because the partner has authority. Fifth scenario, an act of administration that is not apparently for the carrying on of the business, but the partner is not authorized, and the third person had knowledge that the partner had no authority, does this bind the par partnership? The answer is no. Sixth scenario, it is still an act of administration, not apparently for the carrying on of the business. The partner is not authorized, but this time the third person had no knowledge that the partner had no authority. Will this bind the partnership? The answer is still no. Why not? Because this time the act of administration is not for is not apparently for the carrying on of the business. And so the third person should have inquired into whether the, partners, the partner so acting had authority or not. So please remember the difference on the effect on the partnership if these are acts of administration and the third person had no knowledge that the partner partner so acting is not authorized because if these are acts of administration that are apparently for the carrying on of the business and the third person had no knowledge that the partner so acting is not authorized, the partnership is still bound because these are for acts apparently for the carrying on of the business. But if these are acts of administration, acts that are not apparently for the carrying on of the business, even if the third person had no knowledge that the partner so acting is not authorized, 
the partnership is not bound. Because again, the third person should have inquired into the extent of the authority of the partner because he is acting in the name of the partnership, but such acts are apparently not for the carrying on of the business. Now, how about for acts of strict dominion? Article 1818 is clear that for acts of strict dominion, all the partners must give consent thereto. Such that, if only one partner is acting and he is not authorized to do so, to represent the partnership in such act of strict dominion, then that third person dealing with that partner cannot bind the partnership. In all cases where a partner acts without authority and it does not bind the partnership, that partner will be personally liable for such act or transaction that he has entered into with a third person. That is it for this video. I hope I was able to simplify Article 1818 and you have learned a thing or two from this video. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have, please click like, subscribe, and that notification bell so that you will be notified of new video uploads. Thank you for watching. See you next time in MBL Classroom.